This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay. And welcome to another edition of Hawaii in Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin, and thank you for tuning in to our program again. Uh, in the past, or for individuals who haven't seen the program before, here we talk about things happening with the veterans and active duty community, and we try to get information out or get to the uh, source of a lot of information. Right now, it's, today, it's my honor to have the National President for the um, Fleet Reserve Association, and Mr. William Starkey, and also the National President for the Ladies Auxiliary Fleet Reserve. In the past, we've talked about uh, our local branch, um, 46 here. And uh, today, again, it's a real pleasure to have both of you come on the program. Thank well, you. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Ms. Smith, I'm going to start with Ms. Smith. Yeah. Uh, what did, uh, Ladies Auxiliary, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your tie-in with the Navy? Did you serve in the military? or? I did not. My husband served for 22 years, uh -huh. retired as a chief. Mm -hmm. uh, He's been retired now for about 30 years, oh, okay. and so we, I became active uh, when he joined the Fleet Reserve mm -hmm. uh, as an auxiliary member. Great. Okay. Uh, Mr. Starkey, thank you very much again for joining us. Um, well, thanks tell for having me. Tell us about yourself. You know, I know you're former Navy. I'm, I'm retired from the Navy. Uh -huh. I, I spent uh, 23 years mm -hmm. in the Navy. Mm -hmm. I retired as a Master Chief Petty Officer. Yeah. Right. Uh, spending time in uh, overseas or any tours? Or? Um, I spent time in Antarctica. Uh -huh. Yeah. Pretty cold down there, isn't it? Yeah, it was very cold down there. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Tell us what a national president does. What is your mission? What is the, you know, um, your job title? I mean, we know your job title. Yes. But what exactly do you do and how do you try to promote the organization? I represent the organization mm -hmm. uh, on the, uh, on the, the uh, national level mm -hmm. and on the uh, state levels. Mm -hmm. I, we have uh, approximately 300 branches in the association yeah. through the uh, 48 continuous, uh, for, through the uh, 50 states, mm -hmm. uh, Guam and the Philippines and in Japan. Right. Sounds good. May I call you Jean? Yes, please. Okay. What, as far as Lee's like, so we I know that uh, you both entities fall under the same, you know, organization. Right. Both the Ladies Auxiliary, it, that's a little bit different than the the main hub, or I mean, it's all the same, but how does it differ, the ladies from the so-called main? We have to have their support okay. to become a, uh, an auxiliary, mm -hmm. and we take care of all of, most all of the volunteer work. Yep for the branch and unit because uh, they spend their time lobbying in Washington and doing different things. Mm -hmm. So we take care of the background. We, mm -hmm. we do uh, volunteer work at local VA hospitals. Uh, we take care of the, the homeless veterans mm -hmm. and a lot of things like that. Mm -hmm. and we do a lot of community service. And so we're their support. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, Commander, what, how is how are things going? I know that uh, with the different organizations, one of the problems they have is the membership seems to be dwindling in a lot of these organizations. What are you doing right now, like say, as far as trying to bring up the membership or, you know, get the um, younger troops, you know, more involved in the organization? Because I think primarily, of course, this is a Navy operation, but you have the Marines, Coast Guard, but uh, I know that with the local branch, they, well, they have uh, an affiliation with some of the other branches. Um, could you tell us how that's coming as far as membership and the future? Well, membership in the Fleet Reserve Association at the present time, we're down from what our membership was 20 years ago. Uh -huh. And I believe part of that is due to the passage of TRICARE for Life mm -hmm. for the uh, members who are on Social Security. Mm -hmm. uh, previously to TRICARE for Life being adopted by being passed through Congress and the House of Representatives, uh, the members would purchase their supplemental Social Security insurance through uh, one of the insurance providers that the organization at that time had a contract with mm -hmm. to, to sell uh, low-cost insurance to our, to our members who were on uh, Social Security. Yeah. 
the military coalition, the Fleet Reserve Association is a member of the military coalition in the Washington, D.C. area. Mm -hmm. And there are 35 organizations, which we are one of. We fought hard in Congress to get that passed for our members. Mm -hmm. And now this is only my opinion. When that was adopted, the members who were purchasing their insurance through the Fleet Reserve Association for the supplemental insurance mm -hmm. for Social Security, they didn't need to buy that insurance anymore. Yeah. So they dropped the insurance, and not only did they drop the insurance, they dropped their membership. Mm -hmm. And and it took quite a toll on the association. Yeah. Um, we, uh, the funds that we would get from the insurance company to for the members purchasing their insurance, we would we would get a um, uh, we would we would use that funds we got back for all of our programs. Right. And uh, right now, to fund those programs, we have to take that money out of our restricted reserve funds. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, the internal the internal revenue service yeah. declares that earned income. Mm. So we have to pay income tax on money that. Uh, we earned previously, and right. it's uh, at the tune of about 35 percent each year. So it's it's quite a uh, quite a big chunk of change we have to pay the federal government yeah. for using our own money because we're using it for something that's not intended to be used for. Mm -hmm. The different funds were set up for different different reasons yeah. and different uh, <clears throat> projects. And when we use when we take that money out of our restricted reserve funds then the IRS says you're using that money for something that's not intended to be used for, so then you have to pay income tax on it. Yeah. Okay. It's, um, it's, uh, and we have a new membership director down at uh, our national headquarters, and it's her job to develop new strategies for getting more members to join the association. Yeah. Good. A member can join the association if they're serving on active duty in the Navy, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, mm -hmm. or they're retired from active duty, mm -hmm. or if they're former members, or if they're members of the reserve component. Yep. And, um, but it seems like the younger members don't want to join any type of association. Why, uh, why is that? I think from what I see, my, um, my perspective, a lot of them feel with the you have a lot of older individuals who are part of the organizations that sometimes seem a little bit reluctant to bring on any new blood. Do you see that, or am I wrong about that? Why well, I, I see part of the problem with that is um, a lot of the old, if the younger members join and they have some ideas on doing things differently, mm -hmm. the older members will say, "We've never done it that way before," yeah. and they're uh, on the branch level. Mm -hmm. And when that happens. The younger members as well, they want they don't want to consider my way of doing something. Yeah. So I'm just going. They just drop out. Yeah. And yeah. it's not only with the Fleet Reserve Association. Mm -hmm. The younger members don't want to join any of the right. veterans organizations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You take the American Legion and the VFW. Mm -hmm. They're having a membership problem also because the younger members don't yeah. want to join those organizations. Mm -hmm. Or any veteran organization. Yeah, I know. Um, with the ladies' auxiliary, um, now with the uh, inclusion of more females in all branches of military, excuse me. <coughs> what is being done to um, make it more inclusive? Because, like, say, if you say it's the ladies' auxiliary, sometimes you have a wife that's deployed and a husband who's not in the military that stays at home. Is there anything that to bring them into the fold? Or Absolutely. Is okay. We are accepting men now. Oh. Uh, we have changed our um, name basically to the Ladies Auxiliary, mm -hmm. also doing business as the Auxiliary. Okay. So that the, when we take in men mm -hmm. into our organization, they do not have to wear ladies on their hat, that ladies is taken off. So skirts, it's just, um, <laughs> right, it's just auxiliary, so, right. you know, it makes them more comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and they're yeah. very, very valuable to us, actually, yeah. the men, and, uh -huh. and they give us a new perspective, mm -hmm. because uh, having a man at home when you're deployed as a female, yeah. it makes a, a great difference, because mm -hmm. they handle home 
life much different mm -hmm. than the ladies did in my age when yeah. our hus husbands were overseas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think one of the, of course, with all the organizations, it seems to extol the values of family and, you know, community. Um, it, yeah, it would seem that, you know, the more inclusive it is, you know, the better off for all the organizations. I think one great recruiting tool is, you know, to let them know that they are welcome, you know. And again, you know, as you see when you talk to the different organizations out there, that, again, we've seen what happened with uh, when the Vietnam vets, when they came back, you know, how they were treated or, you know, not even wanted to be included in a lot of these uh, different organizations. And it seemed like over a period of time, you know, it, it's just like, just caught on, well, why should we even bother to be part of that when we're not really welcome, you know, within the group, you know, and they yeah. do their own thing anyhow, so. Well, they're very welcome. Uh, we, in fact, in Tennessee, in, in our little unit that we have, we have a, a young man mm -hmm. who is in college there at mm -hmm. the University of Tennessee, and we have already made him our secretary because he's very, he wants to get involved, yeah. and uh, we want more male mm -hmm. components to come into our uh, organization mm -hmm. because we have so many females in service now, mm -hmm. so much more than we did, I'm not saying really yeah. a lot, mm -hmm. but we want them to feel comfortable with us. Right. And I think if we give them, start giving them jobs and things so, so that we can tell them, you're welcome, mm -hmm. you do, if you want to take a job, we're willing to give you a job and we want you to feel comfortable. Yeah. One of the things that, um, I've seen a documentary recently uh, called The Invisible War. I don't know if you're familiar with that one or not. Uh, basically, it was about um, what's happening with the, some of our female soldiers, the sexual harassment, things of that nature. Now, don't want to go negative, but the thing is, there's still an issue that needs to be dealt with. Is there anything that um, within the organization, you know, from the national level, or policies that you're trying to change or enlighten people to as far as what's happening um, with our female, you know, members of the military? Is there well, this is, see, they would be considered as uh, fleet reserve members. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because they're not uh, spouses or, mm -hmm. or mothers or fathers or, right. so they're more of the FRA yeah. members so mm -hmm. that they're taking care of that. They're, okay. The, you're working in yes. Washington for that. Yeah, you know. we have we have uh, we have a large percentage of our members are uh, female yeah. who have served in either the uh, Navy, Marine Corps, or the Coast Guard. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, because I know that. Um, yeah, you know some of the need, the needs. Sometimes there's your very unique needs that need to be addressed. You know, it's yeah. just you know fact of life anyhow. But um, speaking of Washington, what is the attitude now with the new administration that's that's in place right now uh, we hear that there's going to be some changes within the VA um, do you see anything or is there anything happened that you're aware of that is on a positive vein or I, don't know. I haven't heard anything about any changes in, in the VA you yeah. know. Okay. Yeah. we have a legislative team that works on Capitol Hill for us mm -hmm. and they they cover all types of um, um, issues Mm -hmm. relating to uh, men and women in uniform and mm -hmm. and their health care and right. et cetera like that. Mm -hmm. My husband goes to the VA. Uh, <coughs> and I can tell you that it has improved. Uh -huh. uh, not completely yet. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work that still has to be done because right. uh, there's still you, it's very difficult to get in yeah. and see a doctor in the VA because and if they do they're using a lot of secondary uh, yeah. meds and stuff mm -hmm. for them so far. Mm -hmm. So it is improving. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're going to have to do a lot more work. Okay, all right. Well, I know we're going to take a short break and um, we'll come back and continue our discussion with the uh, national president of the Fleet Reserve Association and also the national president for the Ladies Auxiliary. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be back. I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. 
In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha! I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. I can play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. And you're back with the uh, Hawaiian uniform. And again, I'm Calvin. And uh, again, we'll continue our conversation with the national president of the Fleet Reserve Association and also the Ladies Auxiliary National President. And again, thanks for you know coming on board with us. Uh, I know some of the things we already talked about. What are some of the things that are important you know, to your respective positions? With the Fleet Reserve Association, we were founded in 1924 by a chief petty officer in the United States Navy by the mm -hmm. name of George L. Carlin uh -huh. in the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. The main objective for those chief petty officers forming an organization in 1924 was to improve the pay and health care for the active duty sailors mm -hmm. at that time. In the Marine Corps we brought the Marine Corps into the association in 1937, and we brought the Coast Guard into the Fleet Reserve Association in 1957. Mm -hmm. And our main goal is working, on, working with our representatives in Congress and in the Senate to improve on health care benefits for our active duty and retired mm -hmm. Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard <coughs> personnel, mm -hmm. and for the pay and benefits of our active duty Marine Corps and Coast Guard personnel. It's very important that their pay and benefits keep astride of the ever rising cost of inflation yeah. throughout the country. Yeah. 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 Uh, <clears throat> you mentioned the three branches, the Navy, Coast Guard, Marine Corps. What about the merchant marines? Are they included in it? They're not they're uh -huh. not they're not uh, part of the organization because yeah. they're not in the military. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a private. Those those members who are part of the uh, of the um, merchant marine, mm -hmm. those, they're civilian employees. Yeah. Okay. They don't. Uh, during the Second World War, the merchant marine had sailors on board their ship. Yeah. To protect them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I understand that. Uh, as far as the merchant marines, another, another point is that we've lost, they, during World War II, we lost a lot of merchant marines, you know, during that time anyhow. But I, yeah, I didn't know, I didn't know the, as far as the clarification yeah. between the different branches, if they were no. you know, covered or not, anyhow. Okay. Um, again, what, um, what do you foresee for the future for your component? As you said, we, a lot of us are older mm -hmm. in this organization, and we've got to reach out to these young people mm -hmm. and the one thing that we balk about is that some of us older people don't know how to use a computer and all mm -hmm. the new people that we want to get into our organi organization are very computer wise mm -hmm. and we are going to have to learn computer so that we can put everything online so that it's available to all of our members mm -hmm. so they all they have to do is get online mm -hmm. and check us out yeah. and see what is happening that day or that week mm -hmm. and so we're you're just going to have to lay down the gauntlet and say we're going to get into co the computer age and I think we're going to attract a lot more young people that way yeah okay um, we you know you touched what's happening up on <coughs> Capitol Hill or with the legislators and everything else I think with the a lot of civilians like we got one percent of the population that serves the country you know, or in the military, for, you know, yeah. give or take, anyhow. And uh, again, sometimes there's a misconception that everybody in uniform is either doing in dire straits or they're raking in the money, you know. And there's a lot of issues that are tied in with um, our active and, and veterans that could possibly use the support of 
the civilian populace because I think a lot of times when there's different issues that come up if they're not aware of what's happening then they you know they're not going to call the congressmen or their senators and say well you know you guys made a promise to our active duty people or our veterans therefore you need to keep your promise how do you bring the non-military community into you know as far as supporting some of the efforts that you're doing I believe one way we can do that mm -hmm. is to have more of the civilian employee serve their serve in the military to defend our country. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what the percentage is now, but the percentage of um, men enlisting in the in all the services mm -hmm. are lower than it was 20 years ago. Yeah. You know? When they stopped the draft, <coughs> that stopped a lot of people from enlisting in the active military, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Sure. They can get deferments now if they uh, they go to school, if they, mm -hmm. they'll get deferment and, and there, there's no draft anymore, so they don't have to worry about that. And the military is more selective on <coughs> who they take in anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, years ago when I, when I joined the Navy, at the, if a young man went before the judge, the judge will say, either join the military or you're going to uh, you're going to prison yeah. well they would join the military mm -hmm. and they don't do that now you know. okay. um you mentioned well one of the things a lot of people get the impression that any almost anybody can get into the military now with the different changes the skim about with the transgender issue the homosexual issue all these you know same sex and all that stuff but um yeah it's still uh very select on who is able to qualify for the military at this point, right? I, they're more select now because yeah. the education of the members joining the military, mm -hmm. they have to have a high school education or yeah. equivalent. You, the, the job classifications, in, especially in the Navy, in the, in the, is more difficult to find qualified people to take those, take those courses. I apologize. Okay. I was about ready to get up and salute, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> it happens. Don't worry about it. It's, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Saying I'm sorry. Oh, oh. patriotic songs. No, never okay. help. <laughs> never <Yeah>. hurt. <laughs> right. um, the other thing is that, like I say, we have a lot of expatriates over in other countries. All right, what's the membership look like overseas? Like say for former Navy and you know personnel or Marines. Overseas? Um, overseas? Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of uh, people that live in uh, the Philippines, for example, you know, yeah. or other parts. But obviously, well, you know, they have a lot of uh, former service members who live outside of the country. Do you have branches overseas? We have several we, branches oh, okay. in units we in have, the Philippines. Uh, we have seven branches in the Philippines. Oh, uh -huh. seven. And we have one branch in Guam. Mm -hmm. We have one branch in, uh, in, in Japan. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, uh, as far as term limits and everything else, how, yeah, of course, um, is, you've been in for is this your second term, or no? This is my first term. Uh -huh. You plan to go for a second term? Or? I have a resolution. My uh -huh. branch has submitted a resolution for me to run for a second term as national president. Yeah. And we have another shipmate, who my national vice president. He's running for national president. Mm -hmm. So, before I submitted my resident my resolution for my second term as national president. I called the vice president up and I informed him that my branch had nominated me for a yeah. second term as national president mm -hmm. because they didn't want blindside uh, shipmate Washington, his name yeah. was Robert Washington. And uh, I thought that was a fair thing to do is yeah. to put my cards on the table before mm -hmm. he wouldn't find out through the back door that I'm yeah. going in through the front door. Right. Yeah. Good. Uh, this is your first tour as, I mean, term as, as national. national president, mm -hmm. yes. Um, do you plan to run again or is there something? I do not. We have so many qualified uh -huh. members that are willing to step up yeah. and, and do the job. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just <coughs> really am not interested in, yeah. I, I will help in any capacity mm -hmm. that I am asked to do. Yeah. I'm very willing to do that, but mm -hmm. I think I need to just turn it over to someone, hopefully younger people as we go along. Yeah. So. Good. Um, again, what do we, we'll, what is your hope? To, what do you want to really accomplish for your term? 
like say that something that has your name on I mean I know that you're doing it for the good of this the has my name on it right here okay <laughs> <laughs> I my project this year is Alzheimer's uh -huh. and at 57 million people in the United States have dementia of some sort yep. whether it be Alzheimer's or and the care that we're spending millions and and it's going to go up to trillions of dollars for even just care for these people yep. because right now there is no cure mm -hmm. there is no treatment um, mostly right now the care is given by family members or relatives or someone so they're saving the government money that way mm -hmm. but eventually that's going to be done as they get, as the dementia patients get older, right. we're going to have to be put in a facility, mm -hmm. which is going to cost the government. So we want to get uh, either a, a marker uh, that tells us that this is going to be an onset of this disease, mm -hmm. or in some way trying to figure out what is causing this disease. Mm -hmm. So I'm, as my project, I want to make enough money to make a little bit of difference. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Um, well, speaking of medical issues, I know that uh, was one of the very few things or uh, yeah, something very rarely talked about uh, with your uh, experience in the military. There are certain issues concerning health of the dependents. We're seeing issues where sometimes if someone served in Vietnam or other areas, Iraq, Afghanistan, things of that nature, where they've been exposed to certain uh, agents, and then uh, it's being um, carried on to the next generation. Again, I started this conversation. I started this subject and too far into the conversation. Anyhow, uh, we got about a minute left. Anyhow, so the we'll, thing is, we'll have to table that. But I'll get in touch with you about that. But in the time we have left, in 15 seconds or less, how would you could you any contact information or anything you like want to put out there? Yes, uh, prospective members. So can contact the Fleet Reserve Association mm -hmm. at the website is www.fra.org. Mm -hmm. Toll-free telephone number is 1-800-FRA-1924. Mm -hmm. Good. Mr. President Smith, I'll give you the last word. I want everyone to know that we are so glad mm -hmm. that we're getting information out there about our organization mm -hmm. because we we really need some members to help support yeah. these uh, shipmates okay. because there are so many VA members out there that need help and that's what our, the ladies are more or less thinking about. Okay. Uh, on that note, President Tarkey, President uh, Smith, thank you again for joining us and you know serving the way you do anyhow. I really appreciate it. Anyhow, we're down, the, down really down to the wire. Thank you very much for, to stay in tune. And uh, God bless them until that time. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to have uh, National President Smith and I on your show here today. We Smith. certainly appreciate that. Yeah. It's been thank my you. honor and pleasure to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And again, aloha. Thank you.